Hi everyone! Well, you've done a long, you've spent a long time sitting here, and to be honest, I would be sleeping too. Well, before we go any further into my speech, I'd like to introduce you to me and, well, my title. My name is Stella Kim, and my topic is the power of reading. Now, I think we all generally know the answer to this, but we really never talk about this, do we? I mean, we see all these gifted, academic, gift, acad academically gifted children, and we all admire them. We're like, wow, I want to be like them. And what do they all have in common? They read books. And I myself have been a victim to this. I've seen a lot of different gifted kids, and you know, I see them, and I recognize that they all read. And I say, wow, they all read. That's cool. I don't read at all. Anyway, well, before I go into my speech, I'd like to tell you some things to do before we actually start. So if you think any of these things or have thought of any of these things, such as reading is important, the key to my academic success is reading. If you think any of these things, I want you to throw them all out into your mental trash bin because, because as much power reading can give to our grades and also getting that so desired A, it has too many other brilliant powers than just getting good grades. So. Get it out of your head that reading is going to help you with academics because that's not what it was written nor made for. Generally speaking, books are an important medium to transfer information. Books did not exist in the dawn of human civilization. At best, Sumerians created clay tablets to try and like wedge in information that was essential in trading, like Johnny or Bob next door owes me 20 chickens. Us humans have recognized the importance of having written down the information and keeping this record for as long as possible. Like for example, the diary of Anne Frank. How do we know so much about the Holocaust and the Second World War? It's because we were able to read her diaries. Isn't that impressive? You get to learn so many secrets and these long, long histories about the two biggest and most controversial events in the world. And that's impressive, really. Now, if you read my diary, the only thing you'll learn is how much I think society would have advanced if we just admitted this dress was black and blue. That's a talk for another time. <laughs> Hearing, take, so, as much power this method held, problems started to rise. Seeing and experiencing was more accurate in terms of information transfer, well, than reading. Take, for example, this phrase, let's eat grandpa. Hearing this phrase makes no problem whatsoever. It's just simple cannibalism, right? However, if you look at the phrase, let's eat grandpa and let's eat grandpa, you would see a huge difference between eating grandpa and eating with grandpa. Most information has been transferred into audiovisual mediums from the traditional text medium. Audiovisual information dissemination is considered a much more effective and efficient means. Literacy was a symbol of power in early human history. I mean, it was pretty much like this really overpowered, sacred sword that only a few in the populace could wield. It was considered a power itself. However, as we all know, technological advancements have shifted this power. Changed it, actually. People did gravitate more towards listening to and watching the information. It is, of course, after all, a better way to transfer information to a larger audience. The advent of the internet has changed our lives. For better or for worse, it's debatable. But I know it has changed our lives completely. We nowadays get our news and all the answers for our homework and even meet our significant others through the internet. The birth of YouTube two decades ago has changed the game completely. People are now able to share and disseminate information through the audiovisual medium of YouTube. According to 2019 research done by CNN, it is estimated that the US teens use screen media for entertainment seven hours on average per day. Also, according to Education Week, it is said that the US teens, the reading scores of the US teens from grade four to eight have declined significantly across states, 
races, income levels, public and private schools, whatever you want. As the screen time has increased from five to seven hours since 2017. Now, I'm not one to debate these statistics. I'm one of those people you would call a phone addict. It's true. Because I can't deny these statistics because they're exposing me left to right. And while the, with all the screen time, I am still left to wonder, are modern teenagers still able to recognize the difference between eating with grandpa and eating grandpa? Maybe not. I don't know. It's no secret that literary skills have dropped significantly among teenagers. It is, of course, all an inevitable change in how we acquire and digest information. Yes, but it is causing more problems than it solves. We cannot reverse this tide in history. It's humanly impossible. We can't just expect to steal people's phone and expect the world, the world to go back to when screen media wasn't a big thing. But we need to make sure that we need to help understand other, help people understand that reading is important. But there is another major problem. Grammar isn't the only problem people have and students have because of their lack of reading. Creativity skills are declining too. A theory to help us understand the importance of reading comprehension and its application is called the schema theory. Founded by Immanuel Kant, this theory is about how knowledge is organized and presented. Schema, by its definition, is all about our memory structure and how it functions. To start off describing the, th the schema theory, um, it describes the knowledge people have about other people, objects, places, events as the basis of learning. It's basically the pillar that holds a skill to comprehend texts. We as humans have the ability to use and equip our critical thinking and prior knowledge. That's a fact. The text in the book doesn't carry the meaning itself. That's a key thing. The text itself only provides directions for the readers, us, to help guide how to retrieve or construct meaning, combining it with our background knowledge. This theory suggests that our experience should connect what we read to information, knowledge, emotion, cultures, everything, to make decisions and make connections about what the book really means. Without the reading process, we would not be able to make connections to attribute meanings to some things that we experience. You know, opponents might say that listening to and watching the information is much better, but it, we need to personalize this, ex this experience as we analyze the information with our own experience to kind of make sense out of it. Yes, we might do better with like image and listening to videos, but the fast consumption and digestion of information through videos does not allow us to ponder upon the underlying message. So why is audiovisual information a more preferred medium than text? Whether it is just information or just some random news, these audio and visual factors are, well, quickly absorbed. It really doesn't require to do much. We've all been there. Just sit on a couch and listen. It's fast production and consumption, but because it's such a fast process, this information doesn't stay in our head. We don't hold power over it and we can't utilize it for our own beings. Now, I don't mean to say audiovisual medium factors are inefficient ways of learning. There are some great features to it, I know, but it just doesn't stick to our heads. Reading and comprehending has more power. There's actually an underlying message. Reading gives us power. Yes, I know it takes longer to absorb, and, but that just means it stays in our mind for longer. Books may not be considered significant to us, of course. Is reading 300 pages pages of a book going to actually help me ace my exam? No, that's not true. It's not going to help you at all. But it's one of the most instrumental factors that help shape our perception and the factors in our lives. We're exposed to new knowledge constantly. We're exposed to new knowledge constantly in significantly longer time, which helps us retain the knowledge. The deluge of short video clips on platforms like YouTube Instagram, TikTok, they surely give us all the information we need, right? 
But these short bursts, or as we call Instagram shorts, they do not get retained. They're more of an entertainment than information. So what is it with our current generation? Is it our ability to read? Is it, does it have to do with how smart we are? Definitely not. We are all smart. Hardly. It doesn't have to do with anything with our learning. No, no. It's our lack of skill to acquire information and turn it into our own. So you might think I came here to talk about books that are really thick, like professor written and informative, but that's just not what I'm here to. There are so many types of genres of books out there, from fantasy to biographies. Especially in fantasies, our imagination grows. Said by the very iconic Terry Pratchett, imagination, not intelligence, made us human. The man has said the very meaning of the speech. Reading should encourage us and help us with our imagination. It isn't there to help you get more smarter or sophisticated, no. We shouldn't be reading, thinking how does the author's tone of the story develop or enhance the theme, or ponder how we can analyze a book to get the best English grades possible. Imagination itself is a very powerful ability, and which it's just both good and bad. When we read books with worlds that we do not perceive as the norm or reality, we need to imagine it for ourselves and be able to visualize it. Visualizing new worlds for ourselves allows us to compare it with other experiences. So, imaginations can lead to innovations. This skill is especially important to creating new inventions and creating innovations. We all visualize the picture, an image in our heads, and what does that require? Imagination! Who would have thought? A text is powerful because we can visualize the worlds the author has pre presented for us. It can be reimagined in like 7 billion ways. I know that. Audiovisual information already shows you the physical image. It's hard to think of something new and something, as we would call it, out of the box. Because we've already seen these videos and it's already affected our creativity. So, if audiovisuals are reducing our imagination, are they reducing our capacity to be human? Maybe. So let's think about like a hundred years back. So the, from the 19s, the world has truly changed drastically. New inventions and technology have brought our world to extreme advancements. And to be honest, it's only the beginning. There are, of course, positive sides to this, yes. But we can't forget that there are negative aspects to this as well. Of course, well, a hundred years from now, the aspects we talk about might not be negative or might not be relevant at all. Its values may change over time. The books, their values may change, but the power, skills, and most importantly, the enjoyment a book can bring will always be the same. Thank you for listening and have a good day.